The iPad Air 5th generation, thin, light, and supercharged by the M1 chip, but was it worth it? Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. I've had the iPad Air for a little over a year now, and today I wanted to share my thoughts on the device. We'll talk about the power and performance of the M1 chip, my overall experience with the iPad, what accessories I use for it, and how I've come to use this device daily. At the end of the video, I'll share whether I think it was worth it or not, and if I think you should get it. Also, this video is sponsored by UPDF, but more about them later. Let's start with the design. It's incredible how light this iPad really is, weighing at just a little bit over one pound. It's perfectly compact, but also quite strong. The design is super thin, and really nice to hold and carry around. And the portability is perfect to consume content wherever. I'll go into more detail about the Magic Keyboard in a bit, but even with that connected, the iPad still feels really, really light. On the sides, you get two speakers, which actually sound pretty good. I'm absolutely in love with the Touch ID button. It's just really convenient. There's a USB-C connector for charging. On the back, you get a 12 megapixel wide camera which I haven't used yet, and you can record in 4K, which I haven't also used as well. I mean, who gets an iPad to do that kind of stuff? You do also get a 12 megapixel front-facing camera as well, which is really good for FaceTime calls, and I just love how Stage Manager works so seamlessly. I bought the iPad Air 5th Gen in blue, and I kind of regret it. I was trying something different, but I should have just went with Space Black. I also think I should have got more storage. I went with 64 gigabytes to save money, but I'm constantly having to move stuff over or delete it. The display is a 10.9 inch liquid display. It's iPad, so it has an LED backlit multi-touch display with IPS technology. And the resolution is pretty good at 2360 by 1640 at 264 PPI. I do wish that it had the ProMotion technology of 120 hertz refresh rate, but it doesn't. It's not a pro model and I get it. You get an anti-reflective coating, which I haven't really noticed in like peak sunlight because I don't really use my iPad outside, but indoors, I don't see any harsh reflections or anything like that. So it's really good. Before we get into the power of the M1 chip, I first want to talk about today's sponsor, UPDF. I do a lot of things on my iPad and I'm deeply embedded into the Apple ecosystem. I use Apple Notes for writing scripts for my videos. I use Apple Reminders to track important things in my life. And pretty much all of the Apple stock apps that are available, I use. But one thing that is missing, in my opinion, is an efficient PDF editor. And that's where UPDF comes in. UPDF is a full-featured file manager app that supports every file management action, including view, edit, annotate, convert, organize, crop, search, copy and paste, delete, rename, compress, decompress, move, upload and download, share, and secure documents from Mac and Windows. But even better, it's also available on iPhone and iPad, and I've been loving it with the iPad. In my opinion, one of the biggest benefits to this software is being able to edit PDFs. You can also edit images, links, watermarks. Recently, I've had to sign a lot of contracts and I can just edit the PDF, go in and add my signature, no problem, and save it and send it off to whoever I need to. Use my coupon today to get 54% off of UPDF, which is just insane. The link is in the description. Thanks UPDF for sponsoring this video. All right. Now let's get on to the M1 chip. The M1 chip handles every single task with ease and it should. It has an eight core CPU, an eight core GPU and a 16 core neural engine, which is just insane and super powerful for an iPad. I mainly use my device for content creation, writing scripts, researching topics and ultimately editing the video. I also use Procreate to create my wallpaper packs and shameless plug, if you haven't checked them out, they're linked in the description. I was hoping that by now we'd have Final Cut on the iPad, but we don't. DaVinci Resolve just came out with an iPad version and it looks pretty cool, but I don't wanna invest too much time into it, so I'm waiting for Final Cut. For now, I'm just using iMovie. It's able to handle exporting 4K videos pretty easily, it's no problem there. And everything runs really smooth with the M1 chip. It's really excellent for content consuming, 
watching movies and TV shows, being on YouTube. It's also good for playing video games if you're into that sort of thing. As far as battery goes, it's really, really good. You get up to 10 hours of battery surfing the web, and I'm not using cellular or anything like that. I'm only using Wi-Fi. It is capable of 5G if I had the cellular version, but I don't need that. And after a year of using it, the battery doesn't seem to be deteriorating or anything like that, and the battery life is still really good on it. I pretty much use all of these accessories here and there whenever I'm using my iPad. Even though the speakers are good, I use the AirPods Max for great sound. I still really love these things. I also love the Magic Keyboard. This really changed my experience with the iPad because it's kind of a mini MacBook, and I really love how the keyboard looks and feels. Overall has been really pleasing to use. I also picked up the Magic Pencil when I first bought the iPad, and this truly is a must have. It's great for taking notes, and I love it for when I'm using Procreate. I also have the iPad Smart Folio case in Navy. It's really nice, but at the moment kind of pointless now that I have the Magic Keyboard. But if you just want a case, it's a really good case. I also have a nice iPad desk stand that turns the iPad into like a mini monitor. So it's really nice for clearing up space on your desk. And I'll link all of these in the description. As someone who didn't use the iPad for years, I honestly can say I love this device and I'm really big into iPad now. And I've enjoyed every second of it. This iPad has exceeded my expectations and I'm really, really happy that I got it. So to answer, was it worth it? For me, yes, it's been worth it. And now for you, helping you decide if you should get it or not, I think if you're looking to enter into the world of iPad but want something a little bit more, then I would definitely consider the iPad Air. If you're a student, need something for work, or you're starting to get into content creation, this is perfect. The M1 really feels like a pro level device with the exception of the screen resolution and the lacking of ProMotion technology. If you can live without those two things, then I would definitely go with the iPad Air. It may be worth it to wait just a little bit because the iPad Air 6th gen is likely going to be released soon. It could offer us a redesign as well as the M2 chip. So weigh your options. You could get the M1 Air whenever it is cheaper. If you enjoyed this video, then check out my long-term review of the iPhone 14 Pro. It's a really good video. Thanks for watching everyone. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.